Pani's salver was patiently waiting at Nagaipatanam Sudamani Viharam. The desire to go to Tanjore to see his father and mother was burning in his heart. He was keen to prove that the charge against him that he intended to impress the government of Sri Lanka was baseless. He also wanted to get rid of the scandal as soon as possible that he had disobeyed his father's promise. However, he suppressed all his enthusiasm and was determined to leave for Tanjore only after receiving news from his family. It was very difficult to have fun. He passed some time by participating in the daily prayers and prayers conducted by the Buddhist monks. Some time was spent looking at the beautiful pictorial displays on the walls of Sudamani Viharam. The time spent in communion with Pikshas, especially the Acharya Pikshu of Sudamani Viharam, gave him enthusiasm. Because the chief Pikshu of Sudamani Viharam had travelled for a long time in many countries beyond the lower sea. He has visited many places from China to Chavaka Island. He was able to give a good account of the respective countries, their cities, and the people who lived there. Many countries surrounded by seas to the south of the Chinese nation were included in the empire of Sri Vijayam at that time. Many countries and cities like Arimana Nadu, Kambohatasam, Manakavaram, Talathukalam, Mapapalam, Maradingam, Ilanga Sokam, Tamaralingam, Ilamuri Dasam etc. came under the control or friendship of Sri Vijaya Empire. At the center of all these was the city of Gadaram which stood out with unparalleled excellence and wealth. Whenever Acharya Bhikshu had leisure, Pani's Selvar would ask him to describe the cities of the country. He also used to say it tirelessly. He told about the natural resources in those countries and the growth of trade. He said that those countries are distinguished by their special qualities that can compete with the rich Chola country in all respects, where gold, silver, red rice, and sugarcane flourish. He told about the relations between Tamil Nadu and those countries since ancient times. He told about the marvelously sculpted temples that the Pallava sculptors had visited those countries. He also said that the arts of painting, music, and dance that came from Tamil Nadu have spread in those countries. Ramayana, Mahabharata, etc. epics, Vinayaka, Subramania, Shiva, Parvati. He said that the deities of Thirumal and the Buddha Dharma are living in the hearts of the people of that country and that the people of that country are worshipping all the deities in such a way that they cannot be separated from each other. He said that Sajagasthya, the father of Tamil language, has special respect in those countries and many temples have been built for him. Aromas Hivarmar heard all this again and again and kept it in his heart. The prince thoroughly inquired about the land routes and the sea routes to the respective countries. He also heard about the dangers and facilities on the way. Swami. Are you going to visit those countries again? He asked. Do as the Lord Buddha wills, Prince. Why do you ask? Said Pikshu. Because I wish I could come with them. I am an ascetic who has renounced the world, you are the sons of the emperor who rules the earth. How can you and I make a pilgrimage together? The responsibility of keeping them in this viharam for a few days is a heavy burden to me. When and what will happen, my chest beats thick, thick. Swami. I want to relieve that burden immediately. This very moment from here. Can you visit the downstream countries? Hasn't the desire to continue the pilgrimage after this bhikshu arisen in their minds? Said Acharya Bhikshu. Gurudev. Have you read the Granth called Mahavamsam which tells the history of the Sri Lankan kingdom? Asked the prince. Sir. What is this question? Could I have become the head of this Sudamani Viharam without studying Mahavamsam? I'm sorry. Did you read the great dynasty? It was like asking them if they knew how to read. But don't they know who and what terrible sins have been committed in the royal line of that Mahavamsam? The son imprisoned the father. The father hacked the son to death. The mother poisoned the son, the mother was killed by the son. Throwing them in the fire. If this is the relationship between parents and adopted people, stepfathers, father-in-laws, children, great-grandmothers, brothers and sisters. There is no need to talk about them. Gurudev. Doesn't the Mahavamsam say that the royal family of Sri Lanka did such terrible harm? 
yes, yes. It also tells about the punishments they received for such evil deeds. The Mahavamsam teaches people to follow the path of Dharma by showing those examples. Don't forget that. The Mahavamsam is a holy book. It is a book of Dharma teaching unmatched in the world. Acharya Bhikshu said excitedly. Swami, I am not criticizing the book Mahavamsam. I am only talking about how the desire for empire can make men and monsters deadly. Was it wrong for me to reject the throne of Sri Lanka tainted by such heinous sins? That's why the great sages Buddha Sangats wanted to change the Sri Lankan royal dynasty. They thought that they should start a new dynasty with themselves as the head. They were wrong to refuse it. They had the opportunity to spread and protect the Buddha Dharma all over the world like Ashokavarthan sitting on the throne of Sri Lanka. Lord Guru! Where is Ashokavarta, who ruled the Bharata continent under the shadow of an umbrella? Where is this boy who today hides in this Buddha Vihara and seeks their protection? In fact, even as their disciple, I am not close, how am I going to protect the Buddha Dharma? Prince! Don't say that! You don't know the great power that is hidden in you. If you only accept the Buddha Dharma wholeheartedly, you will be as famous as Ashoka. Vinayak, Murugan, Parvati, Parmswaran, Nandi, Bringi, and Chandikeshavar have a temple in my heart from the youth. Shouldn't I get rid of all of them and make room for the Buddha Dharma? Gurudev! Forgive my servant. When I said that I am coming on a pilgrimage with them, I did not mean to join the Buddha Dharma. I will cross the oceans and see the distant lands. I said I was coming with them out of desire. But on second thought, Prince, I have misunderstood their words. But Buddha Dharma and you are not without connection. In one of the previous births of Lord Buddha, he was incarnated as Sibic Emperor. He sacrificed his own flesh to save the life of a pigeon. Those who were born in Sibi's dynasty belonged to the Chola clan. That is why those born in your clan the title of champion has been created. Don't forget this. I have not forgotten. Gurudev. Even if I forget, the blood flowing through my body will not let me forget. On one side, Sibik Emperor and Mananitha Chola were mixed in my blood, flesh and bones, do good to others, sacrifice your interests for others. On the other side, Karakal Valavar, Vijayalaya Chola and Parintaka Emperor joined in my blood and said take the knife in your hand. Gather the four types of Sanyam. Take the army in all four directions. Cross the sea. Expand the Chola Empire and make it reach the glory the world has not seen. On the other side, Sivanadiyar Kochangunar, Aditha Chola, whose throat region spread, and the great Kandarata Thar, drank in my soul and said, Do temple restoration. Build great temples too. Build temples with towering towers like Mount Meru. They have been preaching that. My ancestors lie in the middle of so many people and I feel sad. Gurudev. Unable to bear their troubles, it really sometimes seems to me that I may take up Buddhism and become a Buddhist bhikkhu. Kindly tell me about Buddhism. Tell me about Lord Buddha, said Pani Selvar. Unable to bear their troubles, it really sometimes seems to me that I may take up Buddhism and become a Buddhist bhikkhu. Kindly tell me about Buddhism. Tell me about Lord Buddha, said Pani Selvar. Unable to bear their troubles, it really sometimes seems to me that I may take up Buddhism and become a Buddhist bhikkhu. Kindly tell me about Buddhism. Tell me about Lord Buddha, said Pani Selvar. Hearing this, Bhikkhu's face brightened. Prince! What is it that you do not know about Buddhism and Lord Buddha? Said. Tell me. Explain the pictorial scenes on those walls. There is a picture of a royal prince trying to get up at night. What is that? Who is the woman lying next to him? Who is the baby sleeping in the cradle? Why does the royal prince have such a worried look on his face? Asked the prince. Sir. Lord Buddha was a prince born into a royal family like himself in his youth. He was married to the matchless beauty of the goddess Yasodare. They had a son of wealth. His father was ready to entrust him with the burden of the kingdom. 
At that time Siddhartha wanted to find a way to relieve the sufferings of the Makad clan in the world. He decided to leave behind his beautiful wife, rich child, and kingdom. It was the scene of him leaving the palace in the middle of the night. Prince! Have you not known this story before? Yes, yes. I have heard and learned many times. But the history heard by word of mouth is not imprinted as it is recorded in the mind when looking at this picture. Wake up the sleeping Yasodare and say Siddhartha is leaving you. Stop him, seems to warn. Well, tell me about the next picture. The Acharya Pikshu used to take and explain other pictures which mentioned the history of Lord Buddha one by one. The desire of Aroma's Hivarma to embrace the Buddha Dharma was in the innermost part of the Pikshu's heart. So he used to tell the story of Siddhartha with great interest. In the end, Siddhartha sat under the Bodhi tree, did penance, and came to Chitra, where he attained enlightenment. After he told them about the picture, Pani's Selvar said, Guru! Will they get angry if I say something against their opinion? He asked. Prince! I have learned to conquer the five senses and tame the mind. Feel free to express your opinion, said the Pikshu. I do not believe that Siddhartha attained enlightenment while sitting under the Bodhi tree. The Pikshu's face shrunk despite the restraint of the senses and the soul. Prince! A branch of the Mahabodhi tree was brought to Sri Lanka during Ashokavardhana's time. That branch has grown from its root and is still spreading widely in Anuradhapuram for more than a thousand years. You have seen that holy tree yourself in Anuradhapuram. Then why do you say I don't believe? He asked. But Siddhartha did not vote for anyone, I don't want to please anyone. He sacrificed everything himself to find a way to alleviate the suffering of mankind. After attaining enlightenment under the Bodhi tree, did Lord Buddha do anything more wonderful than this? So is it wrong to say that he attained enlightenment when he left the palace? Has anything done more wonderful than this? So is it wrong to say that he attained enlightenment when he left the palace? Has anything done more wonderful than this? So is it wrong to say that he attained enlightenment when he left the palace? Thus the words spoken by Pani's Selvar fell like drops of nectar on the ears of Acharya Bhikshu. Sir! What you say is very true. However, it was under the Bodhi tree that the way to relieve the sufferings of the people dawned on Lord Buddha. It was from there that the Lord began to teach the people. Swami! I have heard the teachings of Lord Buddha. I feel that his act of sacrifice is more instructive than those teachings. I am sorry. I also want to follow his action. Didn't I say earlier that the three voices of my predecessors are constantly ringing in my soul and tormenting me? I want to be freed from that burden. Accept me as their disciple, said the prince. Prince! I should have been blessed enough to receive you as a disciple. But I have neither the qualifications nor the courage. You can apply when the Buddha Mahasanga meets in Ceylon, said the Pikshu. I have no doubt of their worth. But you say of courage, what is that? Yes, no courage. A rumor has been spreading in this Nagaipatnam for two days. I don't know who started it. People are talking to each other that they are in this Viharam and we are trying to make them Buddha Bhikshus. Many people are angry because of this. People should attack this Viharam and know the truth. They talk forever. Aha! What madness is this? Why do the people of the village care about me joining Buddhism? Why should they be angry if I wear kavit clothes and enter a sannyasa ashram? I am not even married yet. Can't even be accused of leaving my wife and people. Said the prince. Sir. People have no anger towards themselves. We are angry that they are trying to deceive themselves and become Buddha bhikshus. A mere rumor has caused such a stir. What if it really happened? People will raise this vihara to the ground level. Somehow we are living peacefully under the rule of their father. Daily. We are praying. I don't want to spoil this good situation. That's why I said no courage, said Pikshu. Before he finished speaking, the voices of many people gathered at the entrance of the Buddha Vihara and began to hear the sarcophagus rising in unison. 
the Bhikshu listened to this for a while and said, Prince. It seems that the people have come to prove the truth of what I have said. I don't know how I am going to deal with this. Only Lord Buddha can show me the way. Said. The cries of thousands of people in the vicinity of Sudamani Viharam were getting louder by the minute. 